It's so hot. It's so hot. It's hotter than a toasted cheeser. Okay. Welcome to episode 13 of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting and other fiber related crafts. I am Taylor and I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, where I am from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our two year old son, Angus, and our real lazy house cat, Oscar. If you are a returning subscriber and viewer, thank you so much for coming back to check out the podcast. If you are a new subscriber and viewer, thank you so much for stopping by to check it out. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button now. That way, whenever new uploads come up, you will be notified about it. It'll show up in your feed and you can watch more episodes as they come. Your thumbs up, your subscription really helps keep the podcast going. So definitely make sure that you do that. I appreciate it more than I can possibly express. You can find me on social media. I am on Instagram as at WoolNeedlesHands. I am also on Instagram as at Fiber.4.The.People because that is my hand dyed yarn business. It is Fiber for the People and the website is FiberForThePeopleYarn.com. Don't forget the yarn at the end. If you do, you might get lost on the interwebs and that is never a good place to get lost. I have a shop update coming on Monday, July 17th. Definitely mark your calendars. It is at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be there early. Things go fast. Definitely be there. I will be uploading a separate video that I'm going to link to right here, which is going to be where I share everything that is going into the shop update that I have available to share with you at that time. It is called Greetings from the Fiber for the People headquarters, and it is just a very brief video where I showcase the yarn that's going to be in the update. The reason why I don't have that here on the podcast, this is a new change, is because it does take a lot of time um, in addition to what I'm already sharing with you here in the regular podcast content. And so I wanted to separate those two so that the podcast episodes could stay a manageable length and I still am able to share with you in person what I'm going to have in my shop updates. So definitely check for that video. I just linked back to it a few seconds ago. So if you missed it, rewind and go back. Otherwise, the link is down below in the down bar. You can also find it in the show notes, which I put all of our show notes on Ravelry. Search Wool Needles Hands a Knitting Podcast podcast in the groups tab, find our group, join our group. There's lots of things going on over there, but that is also a place where you can get the notes for every episode of the podcast. Also, if you are interested in Fiber for the People yarn, which why wouldn't you be, definitely head over to the website after you watch this episode or even right now, sign up for the newsletter so you can stay in the loop about all future updates for Fiber for the People yarn. You can find the newsletter subscription at the very bottom of the website. When you go there, just scroll all the way down. It says subscribe. You put in your email address and then emails will come to you automatically every two weeks, letting you know it's going to be in the shop update. And also in every newsletter, I include some kind of a promotional code or some kind of a promotional discount for only newsletter subscribers. So you wanna be in tune so you can get those coming to you as well. news for the show, I guess you could say, of uh, show news. I am not going to be recording another episode until the middle of August. My family and I are heading out to Washington. We're going to be spending some time in Seattle for a week, and then we are going up to Alaska to spend another week up there visiting friends and family. So we will be gone on a two-week vacation, won't be back until August 8th, and then I will record another episode and have it ready to go middle of August. So definitely look for that episode coming mid-August. So it's been a little bit over two weeks since the last time I recorded an episode and the reason for that is just because I had some things that I wanted to change with the format of the podcast. I wanted to give myself a little bit more time to get those things ready and then not only that I had to push out my shop update just a little later because I had a yarn shipment delay and I like to keep the podcast upload and the shop update pretty close together so I just kind of moved everything out. It allowed me some more time to prepare for the update, to prepare for the new format of the podcast um, and just make me feel a little bit more comfortable about um, 
about that. I like to sit down in front of the camera when everything is prepped and ready and I'm able to present to you content um, that's organized and it keeps me from being too stressed about it. So it was a planned hiatus, I guess you could say, but I am glad to be back in front of the camera sharing some things with you guys. I've been super busy. If you've had a chance to watch the vlogs, that's great. Thank you so much for supporting that. If not, definitely check it out. It is my vlog series called Making Progress. There are five episodes out right now, the last two of which I have shared with you some of the process that I go through to prepare for a shop update. Definitely check those out. I've tried to include lots of useful tips in there, but you will see later on in the show that you can also come to the podcast for some useful tips in the dyeing studio, but definitely check out those vlogs if you haven't had a chance to do so. I'll go ahead and link to each of those vlogs right here. The first vlog is going to pop up right now, and then in a few seconds you'll see the next one pop up. So you can definitely right click on those, hold them in your browser, and you can watch them later, or you can just come back and check for them next time you come to the channel. So let's talk about knit alongs that are going on with the Wool Needles Hands podcast. We have a knit along and a spin along. Each are ending pretty shortly. One is as this show or this episode airs will actually have ended um, officially, but I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Another one is ending on August 1st. The one that's ending on August 1st is actually a spin along. It is the Spin For All 2017. And there is a promotional video that goes with that spin along. And I'm gonna link to it right here. So if you need more information about that spin along, just click on this video and watch that. That's going to give you everything that you need to know to participate. You have until August 1st. And because this knit along doesn't require you to have a finished product necessarily, it's just having some yarn that's been plied, no weight requirement or anything like that, then you can just go ahead and get started and do what you can and submit it when you get done with it by August 1st. You can win one of two beautiful bats of fiber from Misty Mountain Makers. These two bats of fiber, like I said, are from Misty Mountain Makers, which is Emily Novikov. She has her website, mistymountainmakers.com, and she also has a podcast on YouTube called Down the Rabbit Hole, which you definitely need to check out. It's excellent. But she dyes the most beautiful bats of fiber. So I'm giving you winner's choice of which of these bats that you would like to receive. So you have an option. This is delicate, the colorway delicate. And this is dyed on a bat of merino and superwash merino, Falkland and BFL wool, and Tencel. And then there's a really pretty glittery fiber that runs through there called Firestar. You could also win Mr. Blue, Mr. Blue Skies, which is this colorway here. It's beautiful. And this comes on a merino BFL wool um, with bamboo and fire star as well. So these are the options that we have for the winner of the Spin For All 2017. The other knit along that we have going on right now is the Great Unravel 2017. And to be honest, it is technically and officially over at this point, but because I am not going to be filming another podcast until the middle of August, and because today is actually July 14th, here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast, I am going to be extending that deadline for finished objects until the next time that I record an episode. And I will keep you posted on when that deadline is going to be, but expect it to be in the middle of August at some point. Um, this gives those people that are participating in the finished object th thread here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast a little bit more time to complete your projects. It gives me a little bit more time to complete my project, quite honestly, because I'm not completely finished. I'm so close, but it just works out a little bit better with the way that I'm filming the podcast right now. Um, I didn't consider that when I had my little, uh, when I stretched out the time between the last podcast and this one, but you get a little bit more time. So my gift to you, from me to you. So we are going to extend that deadline to the middle of August for the Wool Needles Hands podcast group only. So the deadline for this um, knit along for the other podcasters that are participating, which is Caitlin from the Wool Jewel podcast and Celeste from Yarn to Table, that deadline has already come. So it is over for those po podcasters, but because of my situation, I'm just going to have to extend it until the middle of August. There is a promotional video for this knit along, so definitely check it out. Even though the knit along officially ends in the middle of August or in the case of the other podcasters right now, I would still love it if you guys would be interested in submitting finished objects throughout the oncoming months. Because if you'd like to continue to participate, if you'd like to continue to thrift um, knitwear and harvest that fiber to knit things with, continue submitting those finished objects. Because I think between now and whenever we close this whole thing up completely, it would be 
fun to do random drawings from the finished objects that get put into the FO thread. So definitely consider that. Um, I talked about that with Caitlin from the Wool Jewel podcast just recently. And I think that's what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of keep that finished object thread open for you guys to submit the work that you're doing with these thrifted pieces of knitwear and that harvested yarn. Throughout the next several months, we might just pick randomly from the finished object thread for prizes at that point. So that's kind of where we are with that knit along right now. But the official ending of that knit along for the finished object thread to receive the prize that we talked about in the promotional video is today for the Kate for the Wool Jewel podcast and the Yarn to Table podcast and the middle of August for my podcast. So just kind of keep that in mind, but definitely check out that promotional video. I'm going to pop it up right here. You can watch it there. And I will also link to it in the doobly doo down below and over on the show notes on Ravelry. There is going to be a Cal coming up starting September 1st that I'm going to be co-hosting with the Girls in the Yarn Cafe, Tristan and Christy. If you haven't checked out their podcast, definitely do. It's a great podcast. They're so much fun to sit and hang out with while you're knitting or doing whatever. I love them. I actually met them at Vogue Knitting Live this year and they are just wonderful people. So I'm really excited to be co-hosting this knit along with them. And the purpose of the knit along is to knit a Rhinebeck sweater. I am so happy to be able to say that I am going to Rhinebeck this year. <laughs> not only for the Sheep and Wool Festival, but we're going to extend our stay into the week after that to just see the area, take some historical tours, do some things like that. So I'm really, really excited to be able to go to Rhinebeck this year. So participating in this knit along was a given because I'm definitely going to be knitting a Rhinebeck sweater. Perhaps you would like to knit a Rhinebeck sweater with me. Even if you aren't able to make it out to Rhinebeck this year, you can still participate in this knit along. It's just knitting a sweater and the knit along ends after Rhinebeck ends. So around the 23rd, of October. The rules of this knit along are pretty simple. It starts on September 1st. You're knitting a sweater, any design you would like. You can use anybody's yarn, but there is a double entry if you choose to use in part or in total fiber for the people yarn. So that is something to keep in mind. The cow will end when Rhinebeck is over, which is the 23rd of October. There is going to be a chatter thread, which I do require that you participate actively in the chatter thread and you submit your final object or your finished object in the FO thread when the knit along is over because that's where I'm going to be choosing randomly the winner of the knit along. The winner of the knit along will be receiving two skeins of fiber for the people yarn, which I have yet to determine what those are. And I will keep you posted on that as the knit along progresses, but that is going to be your prize for the knit along. If you are participating in this knit along, you are able to participate in all of our finished object threads. It is okay to double dip. You can participate in the girls in the yarn cafes podcast group, as well as the wool needles hands podcast podcast group. It's completely up to you, but double dipping is definitely allowed. I'm hoping to film a promotional video for this knit along so that I can link to that promotional video whenever I'm sharing information about the knit along instead of having to relay it every single time in the episode of the podcast. So definitely look for that for more information on the knit along. But otherwise, check out Ravelry. I am going to open a thread just for this, giving information about the knit along as well as a chatter thread. And then down the road, I'm going to open up the finished object thread. Today, I am just having a cup of coffee. I guess um, if you're looking down at this, you might even think that I'm having a cup of cream with a little bit of coffee put in there. But um, that's how I like my coffee, nice and creamy and sweet. And so I'm just having a cup of coffee. I needed just a little bit of a pick me up today. And there's just something comforting and calming, even though it's very energizing, in a cup of hot coffee in the afternoon. I can't explain it. It's really hot outside. It's not necessarily cold in here, but it's refreshing right now to have a cup of hot coffee, which as I speak to you and film this, it's uh, fastly growing much cooler, so I need to drink this uh, quickly. So recently I've been asked what camera I use to film all of the vlogs that I do here on the Wool Needles Hands podcast. And the camera that I use for the vlogs only is actually a Canon. Um, it's just a point and shoot camera, but it's a Canon G7X Mark II. This is my go-to vlogging camera. I love this camera. Um, let me get it to focus here for you. This is a beast of a point and shoot camera. I love good quality cameras and I am recently, I'm kind of actually a new Canon user. I was a Nikon user for the longest time until um, I discovered the beauty of a Canon 
uh, DSLR camera, but this is my, oops, this is my vlogging camera of choice. Now, the reason why I love this camera so much and why it might be something that you use, not only for vlogging, but just in daily life, um, not only is the image quality superb and the vi video quality excellent, but it has a front-facing screen so that when you're vlogging, and I'll vlog this situation right now, but when you're vlogging, you can actually see yourself right there. It's perfect for that. You're walking down the street. You can see what you're doing. You don't have to just assume what's happening on the screen, but that's really great. Also the audio for this or the way that it picks up the audio is pretty great too, considering you can't attach an external microphone to this. So in my opinion, and, and not only is it great for vlogging, um, I know a few podcasters. Um, I think I know a few podcasters. I know one for certain who uses a Canon uh, G7X for their podcasts and they have really, really great podcasts um, video quality wise and so this I mean just an all-around great camera for you know family photos for being if you're on vacation and you're traveling great for video great for photos another really great thing about this camera considering that it is a point-and-shoot camera and it has a fixed lens is that it does have a really wide aperture setting for this kind of camera now what I mean by that is that the the lens the opening of the lens will open really really wide let lots of light in and allow you to take those photos where the subject of the photo is in clear crisp focus you see lots of that really pretty blur in the background which is called bokeh um, this camera gives you that because it can take it all the way over it opens wide to a 1.8 f-stop which is pretty amazing some of the best um, camera lenses for wide aperture can break down to a 1.4 or even a 1.2 so considering that you're able to get a 1.8 aperture with this you really can't go wrong with this Canon G7X and the kind that I'm using is the Mark II. This is the newest model. So yeah, that's what I use and I love it. So this is a new segment to the podcast and it is just a place where I'm going to share with you all of the learnings that I have acquired. I've been doing my homework and making sure I stay up to date on the various different breeds of sheep and all of the information about the fiber that goes into the yarn that I provide in the shop. I do feel like it is a responsibility of mine to do my due diligence and to learn what I can about this beautiful material that I work with. There are things that I do already know just as experience when it comes to knitting and working with yarn in general, but there are a lot of things that I'm learning in my research about the sheep breeds, about the fiber itself, about the production process. So this is just going to be a very brief segment where I share with you a little bits and bobs about the things that I've been learning. I've been getting a lot of my information right now from a book by Clara Parks called The Knitter's Book of Wool. This is a really excellent resource to have on your shelf as a knitter because it gives you a lot of really approachable and useful information about fiber and about yarn and about the way those things are processed and what kinds of projects they work really Really well in. So this is a really great resource to make sure you have, but this is also where I've been getting a lot of my information in addition to blog posts and websites that are written by people who work in this industry. So I just wanted to share with you little bits here and there um, in this segment of the podcast. So today, all I wanted to talk to you guys about was something that you may be familiar with. It is called the micron. A micron is a unit of measurement used to determine the diameter of a piece of fiber if you look at it in a cross section. If you were to look at the fiber under a microscope, you would notice that the fiber looks like a really, really long, narrow tube. When that tube is sliced, there is a diameter to the actual tube itself. That distance determines the softness or the fineness of the fiber. A micron is so small, it is one one millionth of a meter. So when we calculate that distance between the top and the bottom of the circular opening of a cross section of fiber, we're dealing with very, very small units. So the higher that micron count, the finer the fiber, the softer it will be, the more easily it can be worn close to the skin. The lower the micron count, the more coarse the fiber, the more, uh, the less likely someone would be to wear it close to their skin. However, the lower that micron count, the more durable that fiber is because it is not so fine, it is not so soft. So there's kind of a give and take in that relationship of micron count versus um, the 
type of yarn and why you would want to use that yarn. If you want something more durable, you're going to notice that the more durable yarns are going to come from longer staples and from lower micron counts. So they have to use really special tools to measure these really, really tiny distances. It's not like they have microscopes that can see the distance. They have to actually use something that can measure those units. And what they use are electro optical and imaging analysis machines where they can look at 2000 strands of fiber and have a reliable way of determining the diameter of each of those fibers, which provides us with our micron count. And actually there's a newer machine out called the optical fiber diameter analyzer. which can take 4,000 strands of fiber and count the microns of the diameter of each strand of fiber in 30 seconds, which is pretty incredible for something so small, a unit so small, like light years and the whole concept of light years blows my mind, like this blows my mind. But that's how they determine the micron count and that's how we can determine the softness or the roughness of the fiber that we're using, which can kind of inform us and um, give us a little bit of an idea of the myriad ways to use those fibers. So there you go. Now you know a little bit more about the term micron and what it means when it comes to the yarn that you are using in your knitting projects. So let's talk about works in progress. I am going to share with you two works in progress today only. And the reason why I'm doing that is because these are the two projects that I have worked on uh, most monogamously since the last time I recorded an episode. And I actually think I'm going to go about my works in progress segment that way from now on, because when you have lots of works in progress and considering I'm only working on, what is it? One, two, three, four, actively. Um, I'm really only working on four projects right now and I have, I have several, you know, off to the side, but the most active projects that I have, the ones that I keep in my knitting basket out in the living room um, at all times are my February socks, my oil spill socks, my exploration station, and my great unravel Eileen bag. But since the last time I podcasted, the only two projects that I've really been spending time with have been my Eileen bag and my exploration station. So that's what I'm gonna share with you because it is in the forefront of my mind when it comes to my works in progress. So I'm gonna start with my Eileen bag and I am knitting this bag for the Great Unravel 2017 knit along, which I mentioned at the beginning of the show. This is a knit along where we are harvesting recycled fiber from thrifted knitwear and using it to create something different. And you can, like I said, find more information about that on the promotional video that I linked to earlier or in the doobly-doo down below. But here, without further ado, is my Eileen bag. Now, I am at the strap of this. So I'm going to kind of show it to you the best that I can. It's pretty big. So this is the bag portion. And I am using a recycled cotton Ramy blend yarn that I really love. I really love the color. However, I will tell you this, especially going into this knit along, please expect, I would say it's, it's important to expect the yarn that you use because it is a recycled yarn to maybe not be as reliable as a brand new, you know, skein of yarn, especially if you're working with cotton, only because cotton tends to break down over time, whereas wool is pretty resilient with wear. Um, I have had the, the yarn break on me several times and that's not too huge of a deal because when that happens I usually just tink back until that strand that I have left is long enough to be woven in and then I add the ball of yarn back so it's really not a big deal but you know it's definitely something you have to kind of work with when you're working with recycled yarn. It does kind of make me wonder how sturdy the bag will be but I think once it's constructed and the fabric um, is constructed I think that that will strengthen the overall project so I'm not too concerned with it but I really really love um, what's coming with this project so far so okay here we go again so here is the Eileen bag and what I have so far this is the bag portion and then this 
is going to be the shoulder strap of the bag. So I just um, started working on the shoulder strap and I'm really loving it so far. I'm loving the color. I'm loving the shape of the bag. It's kind of exactly what I was hoping for when it came to knitting a market bag. It's that perfect shape. It's a little bit more, and it might be because the yarn is a little bigger, but it's a little whiter than like a traditional market bag. I always imagine a traditional market bag being more narrow. This is a little whiter um, than that, and so I, I like that. And there's gonna be a lot of space in there. Oh my goodness. Like this is really, I would love to be able to show you how much space in this. And there's a part of me that's tempted to put this on my head just to give you an idea, but I'm not gonna do that because that's crazy. But for example, my exploration station project is in my uh, project bag here. I can fit, and this is containing four balls of yarn. I can fit that into this bag. Like, look at that. This thing is huge. What else could I put in here? Let's see, what do I have? Hmm. What can I fit in here? You get the gist. This is so roomy. I could fit probably, I could fit, I would guess, 15 skeins of yarn in this sucker. It's so nice and spacious. So if you want to recycle some fiber, harvest some fiber from recycled knitwear, definitely do it. And this is a really good place to use that fiber to kind of get used to using recycled fiber. And you guys, I really, really love it. It's so nice and soft. And I can imagine how nice this would be knit with a thicker, um, maybe, I don't know, a DK weight or even a worsted weight wool fiber as well. Um, the only reason why I definitely think that cotton is my preference for something like this is because it's easy to just throw in the washing machine and you don't have to worry too much about it. So. So I would recommend if you're going to do something like this, do it with cotton yarn for that reason. But I mean, the world is your oyster, so it's whatever you want to do. But yeah, I really love it. And I can just tell that the way that it's hanging right now from my needles, it's such a cool shape, such a pretty boho, you know, chic shape to it. So... So yeah, I'm almost done. Um, because of the way that we're extending the deadline for this knit along here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast, I am going to have this finished in time. I mean, quite honestly, because today is the 14th, I think this is gonna be done by the 17th. So that's really cool um, because this is really this and my exploration station are really all that I'm working on. And quite honestly, this weekend, um, I think this is pretty much all I'm gonna be working on because I really wanna get it finished. This is a product knit for me for sure. Though I've loved the process of knitting this and it's so nice and mindless and relaxing, this is a product that I really want. And if you know anything about me since I've been doing this podcast, you know um, or can probably assume I am a process knitter. I am not not a product knitter. Um, I tend to take my time with things. I love the process, but this, you know, this is a product knit for sure. So I'm really excited to have this. So this is the Eileen bag. Okay, next up is my Exploration Station shawl, and this is a Stephen West pattern. And you guys, if you've watched previous episodes of the podcast, you've seen this. However, when you saw this, um, it was knit in some different colors, and I have recently made some changes. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen the changes that I made, and I am so excited about these changes. I feel like... I never fell out of love with the pattern with the previous colors I had. Um, I've loved knitting this pattern, but it's just it's just reinvigorated my interest in this. And so I, what I did was um, I had made a mistake in the previous uh, version of what I had. And so I was um, ripping back to a, a whole wedge. I ripped out an entire wedge. And then when it went to, it came to me re, um, you know, re inserting the needle into the stitches again, I was like, gosh, like I really think that there's this needs something and this is a really great opportunity for me to just frog the whole thing and start over. And so that's what I did. And I'm already beyond where I was before. Um, and I just did this. And so I just, it's so fast. This thing just flies from your needles. So if you are interested in knitting a Stephen West pattern, definitely check this out because it just flies. It's so much fun. So here it is. This is my new exploration station and I can't, it's hard to stretch it out too much, but I'm loving this so much. So let me tell you what I did differently color wise. Um, and oh, and actually, I almost forgot. I saved the other one. So when I, t I never pull, I didn't pull it all out. I just saved it. So it's kind of like a little swatch. This is the original one that I was working on. Um, you can see that the colors are beautiful here. These are fiber for the people colors. This is the Craig Nadoon color in the green. The peach is a uh, peach pit. The yellow is spring drop cloth. And then this really pretty taupe is in the espresso rose color. 
I love the colors here and I love them together as well, but I think there was just something about this pattern that made me think that it needed a little bit more punch. And so what I did differently was I just added a really deep contrasting color for the, the parts in between the wedges. And then I just added a different color to replace the peach pit. Um, and I really love what I did here. So here it is again. Um, this is the exploration station and you can see the contrast is much, much stronger um, and it's really quite lovely. So what you're seeing here, the pink color that I have right here is my cactus flower colorway, a very popular colorway. It's not going to be in the shop in the next update, but it is going to be in the update after that. Then the Cregnadune colorway is the same. This will be in the shop in the next update in sock sets, no less. And then the black Black is the onyx colorway and that's just a jet black um, solid and I love it it's a great contrast to have in your stash that um, onyx colorway will be available in the shop in the update on Monday in mini form and it's really great to have just a nice solid black even in a mini because the minis um, they're 25 grams they give you a little bit of insurance if you're using them for heel cuff and toe plus they're just nice to have in the stash if you want to add some kind of a contrast like that into your project so that will be in the shop on Monday July 17th um, and then yeah, and so that's actually all the colors that I'm using here, and I'm just really excited about this contrast. And the contrast is really very lovely. So these are all of the colors that I have in my new version of Exploration Station, and you guys, I am so, I'm just, I love it. I love it so much. I love the changes that I made. I'm just dying over this cactus flower colorway. I mean, I knew it was beautiful to begin with, but knitting with it um, and watching the colors kind of develop in the in the fabric oh it's just so beautiful they're all you guys i know i'm like gratuitous about how much i love my yarn but it's all just so beautiful definitely check out the greetings from the fiber for the people headquarters video so that you can get up close and personal with the yarn that's coming in the shop update on july 17th but for right now this is a really fun way for me to be able to share my yarn with you especially considering it's in a knitted project so you get to see the way the yarn behaves in the knitted fabric but yeah i'm super excited about my stephen west pattern i haven't gotten to the brioche section yet um i've never done brioche before in my life but from what i hear it's completely manageable as a first timer because there are no increases or decreases it's just straight brioche um, two color brioche and I think with a little bit of patience I think I'll be just fine and that's actually coming up pretty quick I have a couple more wedges to do and then I'm gonna move on to um, the brioche section so I'm excited about that so that is my exploration station by Stephen West definitely recommend it um, I'm not a huge shawl knitter to be honest I've actually this is the only this is the second shawl I've ever um, knit and I've never completed a shawl, but this is so much fun. The Find Your Fade I kind of lost steam on and we'll talk about that in another episode, but um, this is just so much fun. It's so different and creative, crafty and colorful, and it's just right down my alley. So I love this. If that sounds like something that you would be into, definitely check it out. Um, yeah, I love it. Okay, so I wasn't going to share with you my spinning and the reason was is because I haven't done any spinning since the last time I recorded and I feel like I kind of have a confession to make. <laughs> um, so here it is. Here's my fiber. Same, same thing you've seen. I have not devoted the 15 minutes a day that I should devote to this to really um, get it down and to be happy with what I'm producing. And somebody on the chatter thread mentioned that. They mentioned 15 minutes a day and that'll kind of help keep you in good practice, if not more. And I haven't been able to do that. I my day is full. Um, I have lots of things going on throughout the day and I always try to make room for knitting because th that is my number one fiber love when it comes to working with my hands and creating something with the yarn. Um, so I just haven't devoted the time. And I think that's why the time that I do spend with my drop spindle, I'm just not really enjoying it. Like, I know that's not a popular opinion in that, you know, using a drop spindle is like all the rage right now, but to be completely honest, I'm not enjoying it very much. And I know I'm hosting this spin along and the things that I see Joy and Katie doing with, and then everybody else in the chatter thread, it's amazing. And I feel like that's great because I'm living vicariously through all of you guys and the amazing progress that you're making. But 
it's been really challenging for me to find the time. And the reason why I'm not enjoying it is because I'm not devoting the time that I need to practice. I have a good friend who works at a local yarn shop here and she's excellent at drop spindling in my opinion. And I'd really love to head down to the shop and have her show me a thing or two about using the drop spindle. I don't think I'm going to have anything plied by the deadline for this spin along, but I think what I am going to do is um, film a vlog down at the yarn shop with Sarah and um, have her give me some tips on how to become better with a drop spindle. And, and I would like to know, is there anybody else out there who thought they were going to participate in this spin along and realized that they just didn't have it to do it, that they, they didn't have number one, the interest or the time or, uh, or what have you to really participate actively in this or just to even get into it. Um, and when I'm interested in something, I go into it, you know, I, I go into it full on. Um, and so I think that this just was one of those things that I thought was going to be a little easier than it was kind of like sewing. I mean, you know, you kind of learn when you start embarking on various different crafts, you learn the ones that you're going to stick with and the ones that are going to be more difficult to kind of take on uh, and spinning and sewing, <laughs> I guess are my two, but, but when it comes to spinning, I haven't really done much. So those are my thoughts on that. If you share my opinion, then let me know. Um, if you have any advice for me, let me know. But that's kind of all I've got for spinning. So I do have plans to have Sarah help me out with, um, with that, give me some pointers in person. And when I do that, I will definitely be vlogging it so you guys can participate in that with me. Um, so that is where that is at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this off to the side and we will talk more about that when I feel like I have more to show. But other than that, definitely don't give up on the spin, spin along. Keep spinning, keep posting the things that you guys are working on because I learn a lot from the things that you guys talk about. I'm inspired all the time by the things that you guys are working on. Um, so definitely, definitely keep it coming. But as for works in progress that I have been working on monogamously since the last time we talked, that is all I have for today. This is a new segment to the podcast and I want to use this as an opportunity to share with you guys some of the things I've learned when it comes to developing a hand dyed yarn business and a yarn dyeing studio and all of those various different things. I have a lot of little tips that I'd love to be able to share with you. So I'm going to use this as an opportunity to do that. So what I'm going to do is send it down to the dyeing studio where I will be waiting to share with you guys a tip from my dyeing studio. Hi guys, welcome to the first installment of I'm Dying Here, where I share with you some tips from my dying studio. Today I have something really simple I wanna share with you guys, and it is in regards to preparation to dye yarn. I dye all of my yarn on top of this prep table, and I love it, it gives me just enough space for all of the yarn dyeing that I like to do, but one thing that I like to do before I start dyeing is to line my table with paper. Either I use newspaper or contractor's paper, one way or another there's always something between my dyeing and the surface of the table. That way I can clean up messes a lot easier and that always makes my life a little bit more simple when I'm out here dyeing yarn. But the tip I want to share with you guys today is not necessarily about lining your surface with paper, but more about preventing dye powder from making any more of a mess than we need it to. Dye powder is very lightweight and we can become airborne rather easily. So as a way of preventing that from happening, what I like to do is after I line the surface of my worktop with paper, I spray the paper down with water. What that does is when dye powder becomes airborne and then falls onto the surface of my paper, it becomes damp and heavy and does not become airborne again, meaning it is isolated and contained. So I don't have to worry about that dye powder jumping back up into the air, landing in another project where it doesn't belong, or being breathed in later on down the road when I'm cleaning up my mess. So that's why I do it. And then at the very end of the dyeing process, when I'm putting everything away, I always spray the surface down again because over time the paper dries and that way any dye powder that may have dried will become wet again and then I don't have to worry about it blowing back up into the air when I roll my paper up to throw it away after I'm done with my dyeing. So keep that in mind when you create your dyeing studio or just whenever your dyeing yarn is a hobby, keep a spray bottle of water, line your surface with paper, dampen the surface before using your dry dye powder and then dampen it again before cleaning up. That way you prevent dye powder from becoming airborne when you really don't want it to. Welcome 
to another new segment of the podcast. This is called In the Background, and this is a place where I share with you some of the things that I listen to, watch while I'm either knitting or dyeing yarn or cooking or in the car, what have you, but some things that I'd like to share with you guys that you might be interested in checking out. Not only am I going to share with you other podcasts that I've watched, but other podcasts that I've listened to, music that I enjoy, movies that we watch, shows that we're watching, especially considering Game of Thrones is starting not tomorrow. Yeah, no, two days from now. So it's just a place where I can share some of that with you guys. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to share with you guys that I have recently listened to is an episode of the audio podcast Radio Lab. So if you're not familiar with this podcast, it's an audio podcast. The podcast is called Radio Lab, and they have lots of different episodes where they talk about really interesting things that are going on in the world, whether it be current events, whether it be new inventions, anything um, that's new and interesting going on in the world. And sometimes, um, sometimes they just tell stories, real life stories that have happened to people that have some kind of um, a nuance to them that make them really interesting and appealing to listeners. There's something about this podcast and the uh, Jad Appenrod, I think I'm saying that correctly, is the host of this podcast. And he has the perfect audio podcast voice. And then he has co-hosts as well that you hear. And they all just have the most perfect voice for this. And I think that makes it so enjoyable to listen to the content. Um, there's a lot to be said for having a really great voice if you're somebody who works in radio. But I love, I love that about it. But I really love the content that they bring. The stories that they tell are fascinating, super interesting, educational, and really easy to listen to when you're doing something as, um, inactive, I guess you could say, as knitting, meaning you're just sitting, you're just sitting and you're working on a knitting project. And most of the time, it seems like the most appropriate activity to be doing is to be watching something. Um, but Radiolab is so interesting. You don't need to necessarily be watching it to enjoy knitting to it. It's, it's very um, diverting uh, in and of itself, just as an audio form of entertainment. And so the most the episode that I would definitely recommend checking out through Radio Lab, um, a very easy episode to listen to, but rather emotional. It's called The Living Room, and I'm not going to tell you too much about the story because I think it's really a, an interesting story to listen to firsthand. But it has a little bit of. Um, voyeuristic undertones, kind of a rear window feel to it. If you're an Alfred Hitchcock fan, um, it's emotional and it's, it's sad. Uh, not like the kind of like sad that you dwell on for a long time, but it's just, it's just emotional and, and heartfelt and it causes you to feel something. And I feel like that's, what's important about audio podcasts is that you feel something from them, that you have some kind of an emotional reaction to them, no matter what that reaction is. And this episode I'm telling you, um, definitely does that. So check it out. It's brought to you by radio lab. It's called the living room. Um, let me know when you listen to it. Um, let me know what you think. You can either let me know down in the comment section below, or you can send me a message on Ravelry. Um, I, I just let me know what you think because it is a really, really interesting story. And trust me, once you've listened to that one, you're going to go down the radio lab rabbit hole. I mean, I have tons of radio lab recommendations I could give you. This is just a really good place to start. So, you know, in future episodes, I'll probably talk a lot about radio lab because that's my choice of listening material when I'm doing things like dyeing yarn or knitting. Um, primarily dyeing yarn. I don't listen to a lot of things when I'm knitting. I usually watch TV, but but this is uh, just a really, really great podcast to listen to. And that episode in particular is a great one to kind of um, familiarize yourself with the podcast. So definitely check that out. The second thing that I've been listening to, um, this is music. And I love to listen to music when I'm dyeing yarn. It gives me, it gets me amped up, motivated, especially when I'm doing late night dyeing sessions, um, because I can be pretty tired and ready to end the night. But really all I'm doing is just getting started on a big three and a half hour dyeing session. And so I need a little music to kind of keep me going. And the music that I have been listening to a lot lately is by Leon Bridges. Now, I, I'm, I'm tempted to tell you to look up Leon Bridges and listen to his music before I tell you anything about him. Um, because the first reaction I had to Leon Bridges, the first time I heard his music, was that this must be a musician from the 50s and 60s. Like, how do I, number one, not know about this? Because he sounds like somebody that he, he's incredibly talented. And so if he is, you know, a musician from the 50s and 60s, why would we not be familiar with this name? 
but he's not. He's a contemporary artist, and his music is just so cool because it's got that Sam Cooke feel to it. If you're familiar with Sam Cooke, it's kind of a mix between blues and old school R&B. Real soulful, um, lots of just southern soul vibes to the music. And I love it. I love it so much. I've been listening to his um, his album, which is the only album he has. I think he has a couple like live uh, concert recordings and maybe an EP, but this is his actual album. I think the album is called Coming Home. I might be wrong about that, but if you look it up on iTunes, it's a red it's a red album cover and he's standing on the front, but it's just so good. And like, I love oldies. I love all things, you know, older than myself. And um, this music is just right there in line with some of that, you know, really great old R&B style, you know, music from the past. And so if you're looking for something new to listen to, um, definitely check out Leon Bridges. You will not be disappointed. And then last but not least of the things that play in the background while I'm knitting in this particular case, um, I, my husband and I have completely and utterly fallen down the Twin Peaks rabbit hole. I mean, you hear a lot about Twin Peaks on podcasts. I know that Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast and Tommy from the Squirrel Pie Productions podcast have talked about this. Um, and that's actually what intrigued me in the first place. I had seen it on Netflix. It's been, it comes across Netflix when you're there. Um, you see Twin Peaks. Like I kept seeing Twin Peaks in this like interesting like thumbnail for the show. And I'd heard about it briefly, but I didn't know anything about it. And I definitely didn't know that it was um, directed by David Lynch, which was really interesting to learn when, and I didn't learn that until the show started and I see David Lynch. Plus it's got this weird, you know, total like late eighties, early nineties beginning, I guess you could say, but um, it's super interesting and definitely very David Lynchy. If you know anything about David Lynch, he's, you know, an eighties, nineties director who's known for strange productions, I guess. Like he's um, the, he's the one who directed Mulholland Drive with Naomi Watts, which was almost like deranged in my opinion, but I loved it. Um, yeah, just, just super weird stuff. And this is, this is definitely no, um, no exception. There's, there's something about this show that is just weird and strange, but it makes you enjoy it, uh, that much more, I guess. Um, so yeah, I've really been enjoying it. It's, it's a murder mystery and, and that's not spoiling anything. I don't know why that would be spoiling anything, but, um, but it starts out, it, the, it, the story starts fast. The plot starts pretty quickly, but it's definitely a convoluted plot line. Lots of different players involved. You don't really know where anybody is relative to anybody else in their relevance to the plot, the main, you know, murder mystery plot. Um, but I think that's what keeps it interesting. It always keeps you guessing. And these characters, I think the one thing that I noted about this show immediately and what makes it very, you know, David Lynch, I guess, is that these characters are so planned. And I think that it, pr I think David Lynch probably creates his stories surrounding characters. So he's a character driven, you know, creator, I guess, when it comes to the stories. Um, but there's just something about these characters that are so just chiseled in stone. They are each unique in their own unique way. Like you could do a character sketch of each of these characters and have such a detailed like look into each of these people because they all have these idiosyncrasies um, that make them special and interesting. And so I think that I really, really appreciate that about the show. I, the other show that I watched that was similar um, in the sense that all the characters were so chiseled out perfectly was Broadchurch, another really great one that you need to check out if you haven't. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that right now. Maybe that's the next episode. Um, but that was also one where the characters were so planned and molded and perfect. Um, here, it's the same, except it's so uh, in tune with the way David Lynch is. These characters are just so wacky um, and I just perfect for the show. I don't know. Just watch it. It's really good. At least give the first episode a try and see what you think. But I've really enjoyed it. I fly through my knitting when I'm watching it just because it's like so engrossing. And I don't know, you may watch it and end up wondering what the heck I'm even talking about and have a completely different view of the show. But And let me know if that's the case um, because I'd love to hear various opinions about the show. But I love it. I think it's great. Um, I'm actually looking forward to sitting down with Brandon tonight and watching it. Uh, it's one of those shows. But we're almost done. I think we're we're only on like maybe the third episode of the second season. 
Um, but we have Game of Thrones coming on Sunday, so that's going to take over. So I don't even know what's going to happen at that point. But there you go. So that's what I have of the things that are going on in the background while I'm doing all of the things that I'm doing. I always add at the very end of every episode the local yarn store call to action. Well, I'm adding something to that call to action and that is the knitting confessional call to action. So please continue to send in the footage from your local yarn stores. I will continue to feature those. However, I don't have any to feature right now. So if you're waiting, thinking that I have a, a surplus of footage from local yarn shops, you are wrong. Please send in the footage from your local yarn shops. I need some to share. I want to continue sharing these local yarn shops from everywhere. So definitely don't hesitate to do that. But I'd like to add something to mix it up a little bit. Um, a few episodes ago, I read or actually, I think it was our 2000 subscriber giveaway, I asked you to tell me a knitting confession, some confession that you have of knitting or crochet or some other fiber arts, a sin that you have. And I loved reading your responses so much. I even sometimes go back and read them now because they're just hilarious. But there was something about all of the different confessions that you guys had and, and how like on point they were. Like I could relate to so many of them that I almost wish I could hear you say it yourself in person. But there's just something about sharing that that's kind of cathartic, but it's really fun to be able to share that and they're so funny. So this is what I'm asking. If you have the guts to film yourself saying your or confessing to your knitting sin, do it. It could be so simple, just a quick selfie, you know, with your cell phone, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't have to be high production value, just film yourself confessing to your knitting sin, email it to me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. I will be featuring them at the end of the podcast um, to fill in the gaps in time when I don't have a local yarn store to feature, or maybe I'll feature both. So send in your knitting confessions. They're hilarious. Even if they're not funny and they're just confessions that you need to get off your chest, trust me, somebody out there is with you. Somebody out there can relate. And I think it's really fun to share those things. There's so much talk, you know, on knitting podcasts and the interwebs and and all over this community when it comes to the online way of sharing things about all of the fun, all of the progress that we make and how beautiful our work is and how, how perfect and pristine everything is and it's so blocked and it's so nice, but nobody really sees in a lot of cases the little things that we do in the background to make these things seem as perfect as they seem because we're not perfect. And if you've been knitting for any length of time, you know that there are so many little things that we do in the background to help us get through the project and retain some of our sanity. So share some of those knitting confessions. They're hilarious. I'd love to be able to share them here on the podcast. Um, definitely send me with whatever form of social media you'd like me to share, whether it's your Instagram or your Ravelry. Um, I will put that down for you. Um, I won't give your whole your actual name if you choose to stay anonymous. I won't give any name at all if you choose to stay completely anonymous except for your face or if you want to get really creative and you know how to do this. If you want to blur out your face, and just have it be your voice, then do that too. If you feel so inclined to send in a video of yourself sharing your knitting confession. Hey guys, so I just realized that the ending of my podcast footage, the portion where I say goodbye, got deleted somehow. I'm not really sure how that happened, so I wanted to make sure I took the opportunity to say goodbye, and I will see you guys in about a month when I come back for episode 14 in mid-August after we take our vacation. Until that time, you guys, happy knitting, happy yarning, happy making, whatever it is that you're doing. Have a beautiful rest of your July and the beginning of August, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!